السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله we are on the uh, verge of uh, the dawning of the month of Ramadan اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان اللهم بلغنا رمضان and that is always a great happiness for this ummah uh, this vast diverse beautiful nation spread across so many countries and cultures and uh, time zones and climates of the world. It's a beautiful thing to witness the preparation for Ramadan uh, from Bosnia to Indonesia to Africa to, to the Americas, subhanAllah. This year I think there's a lot of uh, hope and gratitude in people's hearts that Ramadan after two or three years of very difficult uh, curtailment that we uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested us by uh, with our masajid being closed and our taraweeh being distanced and so many difficulties we underwent we give thanks to Allah and praise His name and glorify His Majesty that He has brought us safely onto the other side. And we have held on to our faith, we have held on to our hope, we have held on to our trust, we have held on to our reliance on Allah. I think we have all understood that the only way we succeed in life is when we let go of self control and Replace that with complete tawakkal to Allah, complete reliance on Allah. Allah is magnificent. Allah is al haq Allah is everything. There is nothing without Allah. So when you uh, tune into that majesty, that force, that enormity of power, enormity of purpose, beautiful clear, uh, pure truth, alhamdulillah, everything in your life becomes clear, becomes smooth, becomes easy, becomes blessed, huh? full of barakah, becomes yani, uh, so sweet and pleasurable and delightful and perfect, yani, like, like the bird song, Allah uh, lifts your heart, lifts your spirit, uh, fills you with joy, fills you with truth, true joy, true joy. Um, you know, there are some types of happiness, you feel it for a while. And then when that thing that gave you happiness is removed or goes away, you fall flat. <laughs> and your falling flat is more painful than how you were before the happiness came. So I call that a fleeting joy. I call that... Um, some sort of exuberance, uh, a type of happiness that is not very good for you. Huh? And in fact, Allah talks about that in the Quran when He uses the term "Inna Allah la yuhibbul uh, yeah, farihun." Farihun. That is that type of happiness where you exult. You. Um, uh, many of you may not like me for saying this, but is, sometimes I feel that it is sort of the feeling you get with the modern use of the word excited. I'm excited for this, excited for that, excited for everything else. Uh, Alhamdulillah, good to be happy, good to be grateful, good to be thankful, but do it in a modest way because the the core characteristic, the distinguishing feature of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the distinguishing feature of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is what distinguished him uh, like the first thing you feel about him in his presence is his modesty, his haya. Modesty is not a word only pertaining to the female. It pertains to the male as much as the female, and the most modest human being to walk this earth was Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, what was his response when Fatah Makkah happened? Huh? Uh, 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفت ورأيت الذين يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستعفروه إنه كان توابا forgive me it is always difficult for me to uh, speak the Quran in, in this type of recording or medium it seems so strange the word of Allah we take very very heavily upon us so uh, may Allah sanctify its meanings in our heart and elevate its presence in our consciousness and elevate uh, our submission to the kalam of Allah, the word of Allah, the Quran. So I will use the English. It is it is um, uh, it is less heavy. So in that um, in the surah, "Ida jaa nasrullahi wal fath," Allah is saying to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Ida jaa nasrullahi wal fath." When there comes upon you the help of Allah and the opening, huh? and you see the people entering upon the deen of Allah, what should your response be? Glorify, bihamdi, praise and thank your Lord. وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ and make istighfar. Now I have spoken in enormous length that the meaning of istighfar and how it is forgotten, you know, it's misunderstood. But istighfar, return, return to that loving embrace of being uh, in union, in one, in, in harmony with Allah. Huh? You say return to being with Allah. وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّبَ Verily. Uh, that is where you will return that is your return so you will make you make the word the word meaning returning return so your inner state whenever something great some great opening some happiness something happens to you the natural state of the mu'min is to be in sujood of Allah uh, to be in sujood and be returned to Allah. So that is why Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when he entered the city of Mecca, his head was in sujood. That is true joy, true happiness, to be in oneness, yani in, in completely in taqwa of Allah. Completely in taqwa of Allah. So the that is in stark contrast, almost polar opposite to this modern excitement when something good happens to you or some happiness comes to you or some beautiful opening like subhanallah if you were accepted into a university course or a job you were seeking was given to you. So the, the response is one of true joy. That joy, that happiness does not leave you, does not leave you. When that, that opening ends, when that period is over, uh, you don't fall flat. You don't crash. You don't feel even sadder than before. No. Rather, you stay in that elevation because now your heart, your being, your consciousness has connected. Huh? Return to Allah in a higher way. You have sort of leaped up and you have held on to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. There onwards, you go higher than that. So that is the the, the secret uh, power of presence with Allah, of taqwa of Allah. When you have that presence with Allah, your heart is present with Allah, you are automatically a modest person. Modesty is not about how you dress, whether you cover your head or you don't, whether you know where long robes or you don't huh? modesty is a state of the heart 
state of the heart that is automatically comes upon the human being who is aware of the divine presence. Anyone who is in taqwa of Allah becomes modest. You cannot... We were covering the wisdoms of Sayyidina Luqman in another class. Sayyidina Luqman will read that surah if you need any guidance on how to behave in the world. Uh, Allah says in that, have you heard the braying of a donkey, the harshest sound? Don't be like that. Don't shout and scream. You are forgetting who you are as Bani Adam. Mm -hmm. You are the sons and daughters of Adam and Hawa. You must remember that and, and act accordingly. So, uh, so modesty. So modesty. So that is the true joy we. Uh, in, in we, we, we flourish in, we, uh, we blossom out with, you know, this is the light of the Muslim, this is this enormously attractive uh, jamal, this beauty that caused Islam to spread so fast because people are attracted to that and people who are struggling with darkness want some of that light. And the Muslim is generous, so we give. So whatever you know of your religion, even if it is one point, one sentence, share it. Don't keep it to yourself. Right? This is our advice of our, our Master Muhammad Even if you learn one thing from Islam, share it. So Ramadan is coming. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Thank God for that. That he has designated one twelfth of the year long time, subhanAllah, one-twelfth of the year, where he chains up shaitan and all shaitan's minions so that we can have some peace. <laughs> and in that peace, we can flourish, we can grow, uh, we can learn, we can purify, we can rectify ourselves. So we wish for all of you that. We, I wish for, it for, for myself, of course. Um, that you do not yani, miss the opportunity, right? This is the time of great internal strengthening. You can really strengthen because you don't have to fight uh, the shaitan so much. Yani the, they all chain you. But you have to worry about your kareen. You should get to know what that is and how to train the kareen. And perhaps if some of you are psychologists and trained in the in the modern science of, you know, cognitive, oh, I don't know the terms, you can translate these concepts into psychological terms. I, I, I am not, I'm a geneticist. Um, but you should know what the qareen is, what the nafs is, what the qalb is, how they all work. Huh? What nafsul mutma'inna means, what nafsul amar bisuh means, what nafsul amar means, all these things you should know. So don't waste time in Ramadan. Uh, reduce the, the reduction of food, of our consumption. Huh? So that should translate to the increase in our knowledge, our ilm, our dhikr of Allah, our taqwa of Allah, our modesty. That will come automatically with taqwa of Allah. The training of ourself, tazkiyat huh? nafs all these beautiful things. Alhamdulillah, after two or three years of great hardship, the masajid are open, taraweeh is in jama'ah again. Inshallah, we can all gather for iftar, but do not go back into the ways that are, are not taking you closer to Allah. So if your iftar, uh, your, your gatherings for iftar is about uh, waste and extravagance and uh, unnecessary pomp and unnecessary glamour and unnecessary indulgence, beware. Allah says in his book, in Allah la yuhib. Allah says that he is very, there are only seven or eight words he says that I do not love the wasteful, the extravagant, the indulgent. So all these luxurious things, la, this is not the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
I do not know in which way you can justify that. Uh, there is nothing in the Sunnah or the Sahaba's ways, the ways of the Salihun, uh, uh, that justifies luxury and extravagance. Never. Subhanallah. Always in our history, if you study the history of the Muslim Ummah, wherever we have gone into luxury and extravagance, very soon after, the civilization has fallen. This happened in Andalusia, this happened in, uh, in the Ottoman Empire, uh, this happened to the Umayyads, the Abbasids. No, <laughs> this is not our way because luxury is unnecessary. There's always someone out there in the world who needs your help. So whatever is excess, you give it to that person. Find them and give it to them. Or find someone who can find them and give it to them. Subhanallah, which, uh, which reminds me that Alhamdulillah, bi barakatillah, azawajal, we did a, a very big zakat distribution here. There are about 40, 40 odd families registered in the local masjid very poor, some of them, uh, some of them very poor, some of them, mashallah, doing well. Uh, some of them you can't get to in a vehicle, you have to, like a four-wheel vehicle, you have to go by motorbike. Uh, Alhamdulillah, by Allah's barakah, we made an enormous distribution last year, which was uh, very much in the right time, because that was a time when food was very hard to get, get in this country. Alhamdulillah, I, put, I think there's a short now on this channel about that distribution, one of the a small snippet of a, a big day-long project. So if any of you wish to, uh, to extend your zakat to that effort, may Allah bless you. And uh, <coughs> I, will, I will personally uh, oversee that as much as Allah gives me the ability and strength to do. Alhamdulillah. So please contact me uh, about that with the details and the description, inshallah. Um, and, and most of you will have, have my personal contact as well. So may Allah honor us and elevate us to be servants of His, doing His good work. May Allah uh, purify and protect us. May Allah bring, uh, uh, shower His barakah upon our communities, upon our little daughters and little sons upon the future of this ummah. May Allah enlighten our masajid, may Allah ennoble our taraweeh, and may Allah send his magnificent angels to fill the gaps in our, in our rows of the taraweeh and to, to fill the masjid if we are unable to fill it ourselves. May Allah bless and elevate our uffaz and Quran those people who have dedicated their life to preserving Kalamullah and reciting it. May Allah ennoble them as they, as they, uh, as our Qurra, as they recite in the masajid. May Allah, more than all of this, may Allah open that the meanings and the words and the directions and the guidance and the mercy and the blessing and the purity and the truth of the word of Allah enters our hearts. Not only enters our hearts, remains in our hearts, is firmly established in our heart and transforms our life, transforms our choices, transforms our decisions, transforms how we spend our day, transforms how we spend our night, transforms our sleeping, our eating, our communal interactions, our social interactions, our family relationships, all of this must be transformed by the haq of the word of Allah. When that happens, you will become in harmony with the niya, the intention by which Allah made this cosmos, made you. When you are in harmony with that intention, subhanallah, your life will be so beautiful and so joyful and so complete you will be speechless and unable to express how much you want to thank Allah and how much your love for Allah will, uh, will uh, elevate you and exalt you 
and you will realize then how much Allah loves you, how deep His love is, that you were created from nothing, you were given existence because of Allah's love for you. From nothing, He brought you into existence. This is what Allah does. That love is the reason we are here. Huh? So may we all uh, taste the completion of that and uh, may we all live up to it and honor it and truly be the ibad of Allah, the devoted lovers of Allah, the devotees, the servants, the true uh, khalifa, the true ambassadors of Allah. This world, this earth, these mountains and trees, these rivers and oceans, even our own atmosphere is yearning, yearning, crying out for the true Khalifa to the earth, the true, um, the true ambassador of God on earth to return and take their place so that we can fix all these problems. Uh, fix all the damage, heal the earth, heal the air, purify it again, bring barakah and rahmah to our communities, not just human communities, so many other communities. Bring balance and harmony. This is Ummatul Wasata. We are a balanced Ummah. We bring balance and harmony. First, we must do that in our own heart, in our own lives, or else how can we? Go out and try to do it for anyone else. So make these your intentions, make these your dua, your dua, your prayers. This is my prayer for all of you. May Allah accept it. So I wish you the best for this Ramadan. And I ask for your dua. I ask for your help and your support. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart I thank you for all of you who have been helping and supporting Ufa uh, in so many ways all of you in so many parts of the world in so many different times and ways uh, may Allah reward you Jazakumullah Khairan and may Allah protect and bless your families and may Allah elevate your status may Allah forgive all our sins and may Allah Bless us with the truly pious, a pure, uh, a true Ramadan, a Ramadan of Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi taala. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina wa Habibina wa Shafi'ina wa Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira kathira Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Aizzati Amma Yasifun wa sallamu ala al-Masihin Alhamdulillah wa Rahim Rabbil Alameen Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ya Kalim